In this video, I am going to take another look at UCLA, who had a nice win last night over Ohio State in Ohio State, and just a few things that stuck out to me. I did a, a, a live um, stream after the game, just talking about the game a bit, but uh, after that, I was able to watch the full game. Somebody was kind enough to post the full game up on YouTube, and after watching it, man, UCLA. I like this team. They they are as advertised. Before we start, I'm really trying to build the channel. If you enjoy the content, then please consider subscribing to the channel as well. If you wind up liking the video as well, please give the video a like. It just really helps. Now, I'm a bit happy that I did not do a preview video of this game because in my mind, what I had happening was UCLA getting into, you know, on, on Ohio State and Ohio State getting into them with their trapping defense and turnovers and just getting on top of them early and sort of uh, giving UCLA their first hard game of the season. And, and that wouldn't have been a bad thing for UCLA, but that was just my anticipation. And hey, in the first quarter, when the game first started and there, I think Ohio State got up 10, I'm like, God damn, I'm, I'm the smartest man in the world. You know, and then UCLA just settled themselves down and were just so damn impressive. One thing good about UCLA is they are so, sort of like a Swiss Army knife. They just have so many good parts. And before the game, like Corey Close went ahead and put uh, London Jones in the starting lineup and moved Brown to the bench just to give more guard help to sort of fend off the press. And for the most part, they handled the press uh, pretty damn well. They had a bit of a hiccup in the fourth quarter, but by that, by that point, the game was just out of control. The, the thing that just shouts out to you in this game is just – how goddamn good Lauren Betts is. I mean, she, and, and the thing is, is she she's not, in this game, she wasn't great. Like, she had a one nice, really nice post move, but her size is just, it's just impossible to defend and just makes everybody else so much better. That, that's the thing. Um, the one I think benefits the most is Kiki Rice, because what happens is, is it allows Rice to to really drive to the basket, and it delays the help that she gets because teams are so afraid of helping. As they know, any shot she puts up, uh, Betts is just going to be there to clean up the garbage and put it back in for two points. So it really puts them in all sorts. And, and last night was almost a battle of, of the sophomores, if you like, in UCLA had the sophomores. Like Cody McMahon just did not have a real get, great game. Like she had shots and it felt like she she uh, she had bets inside of her head and just knew that she was around because she missed a lot of bunnies that, that she should have probably normally get. But it's just that size of bets. What is she, 6'7", just putting, you know, just – She's just a presence. Not only that, it, it's almost like the old Stephen Curry type situation. Betts just drives gravity, even when she's not playing well or anything else. Like I said, with Kiki Rice being able to get to the basket, people just cannot help off of her because she drives that gravity and, and it opens everything up. Like just the threat of throwing it inside to her really, really makes a big, big difference. Now, in this game against Ohio State, Dugalich did not have a great game. Like, I think she finally hit a three in the third quarter. It was like, oh my God, finally a three went down for us. But the previous game that I saw, I watched them play Florida State, like UCLA versus Florida State, and they worked the high-low game, her and Betts, so well together. Now, I, I did an initial preview of UCLA, and I, I think it gives a bit, a, a good overcast, or uh, sort of review of who they have, but the one I left off, and I, I totally admit this, is Dugalich because I didn't know anything about her. So she missed, I believe she missed the previous season due to a knee injury, and I thought it was going to be like Emily Bassoir, but Bassoir's actually, uh, she injured herself playing in Europe for the German team, like she had a one off game or something, and did her ACL again. So she's out for the season. If this team had Emily Bassoir, I mean, it would just be ridiculous. It'd probably almost have too much talent in a lot of ways. But Bassoir was like a stretch four as well that can shoot. But the two, Dugalich and Bats, just seem to work really well together because Dugalich is that classic European player that has the outside game and can do everything and, and just works really, really well with Lauren Bats, I thought. 
Which brings me to something else. Tara Vanderveer, man, how the the loss of Betts, man, you just see how good she is, and you're like, what were you doing when she was a freshman? Like, what was going on there? Because they she obviously could have worked well with Cameron Brink because Cameron Brink has a nice outside game and it would have helped Cameron Brink for the next level. So I, I just don't understand how the hell, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure we have people that like Stanford and maybe they can give me the, the one, two on this, but how the hell was, was bets limited just to 10 minutes and, I, I totally get why she transferred to UCLA. It's it's really the the perfect transfer because she's like the the it, it looked on paper it looked like the perfect fit. You know UCLA went down to uh, South Carolina last year and they just got beat up inside. It, it looked on paper the perfect fit and damn is it not? It, it just looks so perfect together. And she's like the you know the the straw that stirs the drink if you like, and I just don't see how Vanderveer you know kept her minutes so low down. There was uh, I watched the game against uh, Stanford. I, I watched a little bit of the replay Stanford versus um, uh, South Carolina last year, and even in that game she didn't get a lot of minutes. And it's like, what are you doing? That's the opportunity I would have subbed her on whenever Cardoso came in the game or tried to go double bigs on them just to combat their size. And it reminds me a little bit of, um, I love NFL films. And when I was doing the, uh, I did the UConn like Dallas thing. And then is when you're watching YouTube, I I wound up in a deep dive on Tom Landry. I just couldn't help myself. But then I was reviewing their season when they got Tony Dorsett. And that first year, Landry really he didn't start Dorset to like the last few games of the season the whole thing was sort of like welcome to the league rookie you know this is the way we do things in Dallas and you know, we're just we know you're talented but we're gonna play um uh, was it Preston Pearson or somebody I can't remember no it was Newsom. it was like uh Newsom the running back and he had to earn his spot Dorset had to earn the starting lineup and then finally he got the start like at the very end and just went crazy it was like yeah Tony Dorsett's the starter it was like no joke obviously he would be your starter and I, I think Vanderveer maybe had some of that of old school in her that you know you just don't come in here as a freshman and get lots and lots of minutes you have to earn your stripes it's going to go to the seniors first which is fine in an old school world where you know Betts would have had to sit out a year to transfer but that's not the case anymore and you got to know that it, it they're they're gonna have to face this UCLA monster now and some of that is on you because you just didn't get her enough minutes now I I don't know if that was the full problem because uh I did a bit of a deep dive on this last night and um you know it doesn't sound like Betts enjoyed her time there I, I don't know if it was just the lack of minutes I think that did some damage but one of the things that Betts talks about is how I I guess Corey Close is sort of really focused on the mental aspects of her game, sort of rebuilding her confidence. As, as she seems like she's, she came out of Stanford initially scarred just by the restricted minutes and things like that, saying, this program and honestly Coach Corey have been doing a really good job of filling me with lots of positivity and all the things I'm capable of doing. All the negativity that I saw about myself before I got here, I kind of just brought me back to normal. And uh, it sort of reminds me of um, uh, Liz uh, Cambage when she uh, went to the L.A. Sparks and talked about, you know, she was living her best life in L.A. and how she's put the opals behind her and how wonderful it's going to go. Now, I think this is going to go much, much better for Lauren Betts than what will happen with uh, uh, what happened with Lizzie and the L.A. Sparks. I do like Corey Close, at least from what I've read and seen about her as it it seems like she's a bit of a cerebral coach like she's talking you know the the announcer was trying to say you know did you tear strips off of them at halftime it's like no no we just went through our adjustments that's normally what I do I'm just focused on the changes and stuff like that now that said she looks a bit crazy and out of control on the sidelines but it doesn't seem bad in my opinion I don't I don't know it just seems like she's a nervous person you know just sort of energy on the bench, but what I've seen of her, I, I, I like, and I, I like that sort of coach that's a bit cerebral, and, um, you know, all, all these coaches are a bit crazy. Anyway, I'd like to get your comments. 
Do you see them winning the Pac-12 as well? Do you think they're better than South Carolina, or is it just a dead even match and depends on the day? I'd like to get your comments. Your poison is always welcome. Thanks a lot for watching. Hope to see you next time.